Hello everyone and welcome to the Swinging Show Business and Law Podcast. Sweeney and joining me here today is uh, David Babington, uh, aka Material Boy. That's me. Uh, David <laughs> is. Uh, well, I suppose we came upon you on social media, Instagram. You have a huge, huge following there. Uh, you are, I suppose, uh, a businessman, an mm-hmm. entrepreneur. You're kind of a style icon, fashion, Boy, thank photography. You, <laughs> um, so you're very welcome. Thank you. It's great to be here. Uh, so, David, you're, you, I suppose, it. Fundamentally, the 9 to 5 is you have a business in yes. Cork City, isn't it? Yes. A salon. Yes, I own a, a vanity hair salon on McCurtain Street with my husband, PJ. Um, I've been hairdressing for 20, 20 years now, okay. and I've owned my own business for the last uh, decade, over a oh, decade. Wow. Yeah. Uh, and uh, so, and did you, is that you set up uh, Vanity 10 years ago, was it? Or was no, that no, no, I had my own salon first in Blackpool um, with my best friend, and we had that for about nine years. And um, PJ had his own uh, salon separately. So, um, you know, we're, we're married. It was just got to the point where we're spending money on two rents, two rates, two electricity bills. So we merged the two businesses. Okay. Um, it will be three years okay. in, in February. And is that, is that a, a good thing, a bad thing, working <laughs> with your husband or your partner? It's extremely, like, it, it, it has it? its good points and bad points. Sure. Um, I'll be very honest about it. Of course, when you're working together and living together, if you have if you have a, a disagreement in work, you can bring it bring in it the home car with you home. Voice, or yeah. if you have a disagreement at home on the way to work, you could bring it yeah. in with you there as well. But, you know, over the last couple of years, with my blog growing and other personal stuff, I have been able to take a step back. So I just work in the salon at one, maybe two days a week. All right, okay. It would be full time. Yeah. And so then, so your blog that you have, Material Boy. Yeah. Uh, how did that come about? How did that start? Um, it kind of started over three years ago. People were always very interested in my uh, how I dressed and my fashion and stuff like that. And people were saying, you should start the blog. You should start the blog. There's and is your fashion, is that is it all from yourself? Do you, Where do you take ideas from? No, do you it's, talk all, it's all myself. It's all myself. Um, and yeah, I was just playing with the idea. Will I do a blog? Will I not do a blog and stuff? Because um, it's, it's a very female dominated um, area and stuff. So I thought, look, I'll try it. I'll put it out there. And initially, what I wanted to do was actually have a blog kind of uh, for more like the, a gay guy style style guide kind of a thing. Um, but it, it kind of became that women were my, my, my market. Women interested in your style? Yeah, are you giving, yeah, yeah, are you giving yeah, yeah. style tips to women as well? Yeah, or? giving style tips to women and stuff yeah. like that, which be, kind of became where, where it kind of gravitated towards. Um, because, you know, I dress different and stuff like that. So I knew I wouldn't be for, like, you know, the full red-blooded heterosexual man. But, you know, I wanted it to be quite different. And women love that. And how would you describe your style? Unusual. Ha- has, it, has it changed? Over it, years? it changes has all it? the time. It changes all the time. Um, I'm not someone that follows trends or anything like that. I don't do that. I... I pick and choose what type of kind of a character I like to be. Some days I like to wear a waistcoat and a, a dicky bow, and other days I like sure. to be probably a little bit more sexy or whatever. So I don't follow trends. I go with what I like and myself. Do you, do you, does your husband have the same interest? You dress your husband? or is No, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> I always do the PJ. PJ has two looks. He's got a t-shirt and a jeans and a shirt and a jeans. <laughs> And he, that's his thing. I'm yeah. the complete fashionista. And, okay. You know, I love fashion. And so, like, the blog itself started out as a written blog, did it? So, like, you were actually writing kind of Yeah, I was, I was. But um, that's very time consuming and stuff yeah. like that. So, I suppose I took a bit of a step back and it became more kind of photographic stuff and just images and stuff like that. I still do do a bit of writing. Um, but I just think the way things go now with, you know, social media, it's all about pictures and videos. And videos are so important. And how, how, oh, yeah, sure, the visual yeah. image. Because it's Absolutely. just instant people's it's attention now or social. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Are you on Snapchat as well? I'm on Snapchat as okay. well, yeah. And yeah. so, uh, sorry, I'm not Snapchat, so I'm familiar yeah. with it. And did you, like, the photography aspect, is that a passion you've had yourself for a long time? I've always or? been interested in photography myself with the fashion side of it. You know, I, I've been reading Vogue magazine for years and years, and I've always uh, been obsessed with the editorial spreads and stuff. So the photography is all self-taught. Um, never did a single day of, of photography course or anything like that. I just uh, bought a good camera, and I... I believe I have a good eye for it and I visualise an image. I like to tell a story through the, the photo shoots that I do. And um, yeah, it's also tough. And is, are the photo shoots for uh, clients of yours that want a photo shoot? Or are they for like, you kind of like do a before and after type thing or how? It's a combination. Um, I work with a lot of bloggers, so I would photograph them and stuff like that for them to have, you know, quite good content when they're, you know, it's about branding and selling a brand and stuff like that. So I photograph a lot of bloggers, but then I do a lot of kind of one-on-one personal 
photo shoots with people um, in my salon, you know, we can give them a bit of a makeover and come in and get their hair and makeup done and then I could photograph them and they hire me to do that. Is that a service well. that people get? Oh, yeah, wow. they can do that as well. Yeah, absolutely. And I promote that on my Snapchat, guys, if it's something that you're interested, contact me and, and it, it's quite successful and sort of that. And, you know, other things like photographing little kids and things like that for people love that. I don't do studio work. I'm all very kind of natural organic type of, of uh, photo shoots. And how your social media audience then has just been building and building and building. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Girls, how yeah, how yeah. is that followed? Is, is that just because your content and the audience that's out there that they're just yeah. engaged with it? Yeah, I think it's all, it's a fickle, this blogging thing, influencer thing, social media is incredibly fickle and stuff, you know, and one day you could just post something that you yourself might think is that interesting, you get a user response, and another day something that you love doesn't get that much so it just grows some weeks I could get like 200 new followers another week I might get five I, so, I, I saw a while ago that you were in your off or in your work and there was like a group of girls that come outside the, <laughs> like at the window yeah 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 you know, it's crazy so like it's, yeah, a, yeah, it's yeah. a real life and like, it's, impact it's a very having, broad scale yeah. of, of um, age groups a lot of yeah. kind of young teenage girls and, and guys and stuff like that follow me and then there would be women in their 60s that follow me and find me hilarious because I show a lot of myself at home yeah. and my cooking and yeah interior and stuff Actually, like that, that is that another passion you have you're cooking yeah i love cooking i yeah. love yeah yeah i absolutely love cooking and is that so, something as well you're self-taught again or like, yeah self-taught being a, a vegetarian for years and years you have to kind of come up with interesting ways to yeah. for your taste buds to be sure. tantalized so i'm always experimenting and on snapchat i show a huge amount of of my cooking and and talking them through step by step mm. with the um, recipes and yeah stuff. i've seen loads of times it's, it's yeah it's great you're a great chef yeah, yeah. yeah. And thank, you, thank you and you just cook for your husband or dinner parties or is it just no more for us and stuff like that yeah. he you know he, he's a meat eater he loves his meat and stuff okay. like that so there's a bit of a balance do you, do you cook meat i cook well? meat as well okay. but Some i try years. and push to the vegetarian side yeah yeah and he's very fair a lot of the time when he's in work he'll feel like look if i want to have meat i can eat it and during my lunch and then at home we'll have a vegetarian meal so you, got, you're, you have dogs in your yeah yeah yeah. i just love it like they're yeah, brilliant yeah, them. Yeah, yeah, yeah wow yeah. like they're part of your like day-to-day -day routine Huge, your yeah, social media absolutely. they're nearly yeah. have, they should nearly have their own page you know, <laughs> the stage, they? people love them they yeah, yeah. Them. it's uh, bobby ernie and will be and stuff like okay, that wow. so, yeah. and then do they have who, who looks after them while you're away again um because i'm i'm at home most of the time myself when really? i'm not working so I'm, i spend the huge amount of time with them i'm very much the type of person that you know they're like my babies i'm not i don't have dogs just to have yeah. them at the back you okay, know they're, yeah. they're part of the family how were you able to uh transfer your passion mm. for like beauty and fashion and blogging like mm. into now a business yeah like is it, like that's that's a really lucky thing to be able to do yeah. isn't it i guess because i've been in the hairdressing industry for two decades you're involved in the beauty industry you, you have to be aware of fashion and trends and stuff like that so it just came natural to tie in the the hair the makeup the clothes the styling mm. not the photography. Now with social media yeah it just it just it was you know it just it just all made sense to me and i i have a good eye for it yeah and yeah it just it just it just happened and I, I, do you have is your business mind as well into the day-to-day -day running of it or previous when you are wearing your hands on to like the financials the tax the oh yeah all, all, all of it, yeah much more hands-on when i had my separate one when when i merged the, when we merged the two it's difficult when you've got two alpha males, you know, <laughs> um, when, you know, you're trying to, you know, uh, too many opinions and stuff. So I yeah. took a step back and I said, yeah. okay, look, PJ, you can do all that side. I can yeah. swan in once or twice a week, do my clients and then yeah. continue okay. on the other stuff that I do. Yeah. So, yeah. Okay. Um, the, the, the beauty industry itself. Mm. That kind of ebbs and flows, trends and you know styles and all. absolutely. Like, where, where is it now? Again, like I said, it's it's another fickle fickle industry. Yeah. What's hot ones? It could be completely yeah. not in the following week. So. Um, personally, for me, I I find in the hairdressing industry and stuff like that, especially, is you know. It's very important for a woman to change her hair. That's something that you got to keep going. You got to recommend it and stuff. But I don't recommend clients change because it's a trend. Change because you want it and something that suits you. Um, but yeah, it goes up and down, and it's very again. It can be very fickle. You could have you could have a client for a decade, ten years, and if you give her, you know, like one bad one bad haircut, God forbid, you're the talk of the town, and she yeah. vanished, you know, and stuff like that. So it's a fickle industry, the okay. beauty industry, and there's always newer hairdressers coming out, and social media. Now you know you're look you're, you're huge it's amount so of powerful, our, a huge it? amount of our clients at the moment are coming our newer clients are coming from social media and do you think that's because your brand Material yeah, Boy yeah. is now been transferred over to Vanity a combination and of vice versa. a combination of Material Boy and I keep pushing my husband to yeah. push more and show more on yeah. his Insta stories 
on the salon page yeah and it works it yeah. really does work when it's, it has to be consistent yeah you can't jump on once a week twice a week kind of yeah. thing oh, yeah. it needs to be regular it's time, isn't it? yeah it's time consuming and you gotta but i think you also have to love it don't you yourself the you have to media love aspect. it and yeah. there's days where i have absolutely nothing to say i just feel burnt out and you're like you nearly feel like it's an obligation to yeah. entertain yeah. 12 yeah. 14 thousand people a day yeah and um, when you don't mm. the questions come in like, what are you doing what yeah, are you I've, doing today? i've seen that recently i think it's casey neistat or one of these uh, youtubers were like there's a thing in the states now where mm. it was like uh, blogger burnout yeah 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 you know to be creative all the time and that yeah. pressure to consistently Absolutely. put stuff out there Absolutely. it is a pressure and, isn't it and that's another thing i'm you know I'm so happy I don't do the YouTube thing because that's another dynamic so altogether. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's what I do. I love it, but it's so handy to pick up my phone and that's it. And yeah. I have to, you know, do all of this, the lighting and the, you yeah. know, I couldn't deal with that on a daily basis. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's consistent. I love it. I enjoy it, but yeah. I like to keep it really yeah. and stuff. Yeah, you can yeah. control it. Yeah. Uh, and then like the beauty industry. So like obviously uh, ladies predominantly, you know, mm. more and more men, mm -hmm. heterosexual mm -hmm. men, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. I think that everyone's trying to look their best, of improve course. themselves, yeah. you know, whether that's hair, beauty, mm -hmm. clothes, fashion, but it seems now cosmetic or elective cosmetic, yeah. uh, I wouldn't call it surgeries, what would you call it? Um, like as in Botox and that yeah, type of stuff. Like yeah, it's become yeah. more prevalent, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, of course. And like, I know you're, you're, you yeah. don't hide the fact that you're I'm you very elective. open about it, very, yeah, very open like, about it. Um, you know, for me, of course, it's going to the right person. You have to do your research in this. There's a lot of people out there doing these like, you know, deals where you're getting lip filler and Botox done for a hundred euro, you know, you have to question that. And I go to, you know, their doctors, their, you know, Caesar Clinic is where I'm, I- It's Pat, Fe Pat Feelings. Pat Feelings, yeah. yeah. And, had, and, and James podcast, and, yeah, 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 and he's great fun. Um, yeah. They know their stuff. You have yeah. to go to a doctor. Mm -hmm. um, I do it for myself. Um, and, and when like, did you start doing it? I start actually getting Botox injections about five, five and a half years ago was before I, I myself and Peter got married in Barcelona. So um, it was about just wanting to look your freshest and stuff like that. I'm actually Jewish now, so. <laughs> yeah. uh, but you know, cross feet and, and you know, frown lines and stuff like that, they do come when we get older. And the way I see it is getting a Botox injection is like a woman coming into the salon getting her, her grey roots covered up. And I think it's a terrible shame that there's a shame attached to women getting filler in Botox and this, there's nothing wrong with it um, it's for your own it's your own choice and you're doing mm. it for yourself that's the important thing what do but you think yeah no I think you're 100% mm. I hear what you're saying but say for um, impressionable girls yeah yeah they're on social media mm -hmm. I'm not talking about you in particular of course, yeah, yeah, just yeah. in general yeah, yeah. in their early 20s they're yeah. coming on yeah. surely like they don't physically need yeah. Botox no, apart from not. maybe some kind of you know, they've had been in an accident or something like yeah, that. Yeah, so, yeah, that's yeah, just, yeah. That's a very broad thing Of course, no, I understand say. it. And that's but one like, thing that I'm, ver I'm very uh, conscious about. I'm not saying girl, girls, you need to get this. What I'm all about is that if you're interested in getting this done, this is where I go, this is what's involved, this is how it hurts and how much it's going to cost, etc., mm. etc. All of these young girls are looking at the likes of their Kardashians, mm. you know, and every one of them has work done. The youngest one is, is a Kylie. She's having the filler done since she's 16. I'm nodding, but I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Well, they're, you know, the, the, oh, yeah, most, yeah. the most, uh, the the most powerful yeah. people in, in the world yeah. at the moment, the Kardashians. Yeah. And girls are looking at this and they want to be like that. Yeah. Like I said, when it gets to a point where you're old enough and you can make that decision for yourself and yeah. Yeah. do it for you don't do it to be like anyone else but do your research yeah don't go to the people that are doing it on yeah. the cheap and stuff yeah. like that because well, accidents can happen I and mean, you can go to the wrong people it's sure. you're injected with something at the end of the day and we, and we have wrong. medical negligence cases here against yeah people yeah yeah bad, it can bad go wrong. and it can things go like wrong. that and it's it's horrific the consequences to it yeah but do you think like you you're obviously you know um uh, mature enough and independent enough mm -hmm. and self-assured and self-aware to make those decisions for yourself and mm. you look fantastic mm, thank you but like <laughs> but where where like is there a point where it kind of it's not it becomes not an addiction but mm. like what's next what's next and then mm. all of a sudden people become unrecognizable from where yeah they, sh they would have been naturally that's it and you have to know when enough is enough when i do it is it's like a top-up kind of a thing mm. like i said it's like a woman coming into the salon to get her roots covered up every six to eight weeks i would when when i feel there's a little bit of lines coming back and I, if i feel a little tweak can freshen it up I just keep it like that. You have to know when enough is enough. And it's about maintaining. Mm. Um, and the thing is, the good thing is about it, if you get it done, once you don't go too far, it does wear off. It's not something that is permanent unless you're having you know, surgery, which is a different thing. But it does wear off after a while and stuff like that. So things will go back to how they were. 
before hopefully if you go to the right person like i said but yeah as you have to be very careful and reel it in and don't go too far because there's a lot of botched <laughs> yeah there is people yeah, out yeah. there and it, when it's so obvious that people have it done that's not what it's meant to be about and you know yeah uh, and so what's the future plans for yourself the future plans um you know what i always say uh, i take it day by day and stuff like that but every week a new possibility comes with my blog and stuff like that people reach out to me all the mm. time and i'm a columnist for cork weddings magazine so it's um i'm today i was just planning a fabulous photo shoot and stuff like that so there's stuff going on all the time i'm um, i'm seeing events coming up and just just loads every week That's it's brilliant. different yeah yeah and yeah. so just if i was say a young uh, hairdresser or yeah uh, person works starting out in a salon what kind of advice would you give to someone starting out on their starting out, career yeah um be aware that you know the hairdressing industry it's not all glamorous you don't walk into the salon and pick up a scissors within a couple of weeks there's a long process before you get that and an awful lot of guys and young girls and guys that come into it they they want to run before they can walk and they lose patience and they, they, they leave because they think that they can do all the, the, the amazing stuff. They're looking at YouTube videos and they think that they can do it from looking at that. You can't. There's a training process like everything. You have to start off small and work your way up. And it's it's a tiring job. Mm. You are on your feet all day for many, many hours. The first couple of years, you're doing an awful lot of like cleaning and teas and coffees and shampooing. And you're learning apprenticeship. You're learning, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Abs and that's how I did it uh, back yeah. in the and day, 20 years ago. Even what you were saying there, having a client for 10 years, it, part of the learning is building relationship 100%, with people, isn't it? Yeah, and with either your boss or your staff, but also mm -hmm. the client, mm -hmm. you know, just and on a personal listening, level. And listening to the client and getting to know them and stuff like that. If you have a client coming to you for 10 years and you don't know her children's name, then you know, you're not doing a very good job. Hairdressing is not, I always say, it's not just about the hair. Mm. A woman come in and they want to sit down in the seat, and the majority of the time they offload. Because that's probably the only hour, hour and a half in the week or two weeks. Mm -hmm. That's their time, especially Absolutely. if they're families, they partners, mm -hmm. kids, jobs. One hundred percent. Yeah. So they're there just to breathe yeah. out. They do, and they do relax. That. And sometimes you know that's great because you can build up a great. You hear loads of secrets, though, do you? Oh my God! They, 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 I have heard about clients that are, are having affairs or cheating on their oh, husbands. The dark. Oh, no, no, no. no names. I'll be giving out no names, but you know who you are. <laughs> I've heard it all. I've heard it all. Yeah. And but also, you know, it's great fun. But also, then you go through a process of, of grieving process. Really, you know, when you have them for so long. I've got clients that are coming to me for over fifteen years, and I've gone through the middle with them, christenings of the child, their child going mm. off to college, and you know things. And it's 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 amazing. At times, there are clients that can exhaust you. Demanding. Because yeah. they will wait for that eight weeks to yeah. come in and treat you like a counsellor. They're sat in front of a mirror, and I always said that's what it's really about. Mm. I'm listening, like I said, yeah, it's about listening. But they're talking to themselves. I think there's a psychological thing behind it all. They're talking to themselves, they're offloading. And they will give you every negative thing that's happening in their life, and you have to give them advice whether they're even listening or not. You have but they, to. But they're then, so they're, they're walking out though, ten, not only 10 feet tall because of their yeah. haircut and yeah. their style, There's, but it's, been it's an emotional off burden Absolutely. on Absolutely, yeah. It's not always about the hair. Mm. It's, about, it's a process, you know, you know, and some clients come in and they don't even want to open their mouth to you. They just say, do what you do, and they look at the magazines, and you know, and something that's great as well. Because yeah. you're in your head thinking, what am I going to make with dinner this evening? <laughs> what am I making my husband tonight? Peter's going to have this thing <laughs> out, yeah. Peter's having corn sausages again. Um, but yeah, it, Going back to anyone starting off, it's an incredible profession. And um, being a hairdresser has led me to where I am today because of the fashion industry and stuff like that. And um, your hands are your tools. You can travel the world with it. You know, mm. it's it's on the top jobs, places like Australia and America for getting visas and things. Hairdressers, it's there's a huge demand for it. Once you're good, mm. you know, I'm a firm believer of you can teach anyone to be anything, but you can't teach anyone to be fabulous. Mm. You know, you that has to come that, from within. That word fabulous. Yeah, is that. That's driven by passion, isn't it? Doing something and you, you have love. to have the passion. Mm. You have to have the passion. You can be mediocre and go like that through your career, or you can mm. be, you know, working for somebody your whole life or own your own hair salon. And I knew which path I wanted to take. When I started out, within the first couple of weeks, I knew I wanted to have my own salon. I knew it. It was just, it, 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 there was no other option. Is that, going is to that, have my own. Is that ambition? Highly, yeah, highly ambitious. Yourself. Yeah, highly ambitious. Highly ambitious. And being a high achiever, wanting to be a high achiever. And I love, um, you know, the new year just came. I don't give myself New Year's um, resolutions. I give myself New Year goals. I always have a goal. And my husband is very similar that way. And that's mm. why we got on so well. He do you, do you, just on the social media aspect, is there, is there uh, 
bad aspects to that as well. Like, do you there get, is. Do you yeah, get there abuse? Is. Do you get messed? Do you get things that are yeah. nasty? Or just because yeah. you're putting yourself out there and you're yeah. quite flamboyant? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, I'm a target. I'm a target. But you know, we, we all can be and stuff like that. I put myself out there. It's my choice. I'm very open about what I do. But you do get abuse. I, I was only on the radio a couple of weeks back of of abusive messages I got from showing having um, um, a lip filler procedure done on my my Snapchat. I was called a freak. I have serious issues. I'm going to look repulsive when I'm older. There's something wrong with me. Blah blah blah. I often think though that's a reflection of the person that sent it rather yeah, than you. You Absolutely. know, like why and would you? Why? Like, yeah, of you course. Know? And look, and I'm, I'm not. How do you deal with that? Yeah, I'm not naive to think everything I put out there is for everybody. And I always say, when in advance of me having these two uh, procedures done, I let people know the day before. I tell them if it's not for you, look away. If you know, if you're a fear of needles, it's not for you. Don't look. Or if you don't like what you see, unfollow me. Um, when I get the negative um, abuse, when I started a couple of years ago. It would have been a little bit more of an impact. Now, mm. I generally, I read it, I erase and I block. Mm. And that's my thing now. Um, I can't control what people uh, see when they see me, what they think of me. You know, I don't agree with what everyone else mm. uh, does either. I wouldn't be uh, abusive and aggressive to somebody because mm. of it. But if I don't like somebody, what I'm seeing, I don't follow them mm. anymore. I don't have anyone in my feed I don't, I don't want to watch. So you just have to get a thick skin. You have to get a thick skin. Do you it. think the thick skin that you developed through that, was that developed before social media? No, that that came from a very long time ago. Yeah. Being, being the flam, but you, you know, that's the mean, yeah. I, I always stood out as a child, and um, I went through severe, severe bullying in secondary school. Um, so you know, for, for your sexuality, for, for your, my sexuality, for yeah, for being this, you know, camp, timid little little kind of girly boy, which I would have been back then, and stuff, which I probably still am now. But um, primary school was fine, but when it went into secondary, it became. Brutal. It was every day. It was relentless. I had to and leave school at fourteen. Is it, is it physical, emotional? Physical, emotional name calling. It was just. It was just horrific. And um, you know, back then it w it was acceptable for uh, people to sh call me a faggot in class. But God forbid you use the f word. You know, you're you're murdered. But uh, teachers didn't really step in. They didn't intervene. They saw what happened, and it was just like, oh, you know, this is it is what it is. But when you deal with that type of um, abuse from people over years you you develop a thick skin that's where yeah. that came from really and how did that affect you at the time like you said you left school at 14 yeah you changed school yeah uh, did that have like a mental impact on you did you usually i didn't go i i was done at i was done at 14 i didn't go to school again I, I couldn't i couldn't take it anymore i was skipping school i you know i kept it all for my parents i didn't tell them what was going on um so i refused point blank um to go to another school because i knew it would happen again um, after that, I uh, took about a year out, and then I did. And had, were you open about your sexuality back then, or was it you still uh, come to uh, terms with things like that yourself? Yeah, or? no, I was always very open about it, and it was always hard to hide. You know, yeah, well, I, yeah. I, you know, I was, uh, I was what I was, and yeah. I that was the thing as well. Even though I went through all this, I never tried to be anyone. I, I never wanted to be anyone but myself. I was so happy and content being with being my own skin. Mm -hmm. It was society that had the problem with it, and there was no way it was changing. There was no way it was changing. So I took a kind of a year out, and then I ended up doing like a false course back in the day, and that was out in the opposite side of the city, out in uh, Bishopstown, because I'm from Churchfield originally, and I'd walk to and from there every day to escape from the kind of the north side brutality that I felt I was getting on a daily basis. But then I started out there as well, because, you know, it, it was Cork, people in our mind. What was the course? It was, I started off doing horticulture and then I did catering right. actually. Okay. So some of the catering skills would have co come from yeah, that. Yeah. And that went on for a while and then eventually I got a um, work um, placement in the key co-op. And I was 16 and that's when I have kind of found, okay, I'm around people now that get me. They're very open, broad-minded people there. And that, then I ended up getting a job there. And when I was 17 and a half, I then became a hairdresser. But I knew it was a stepping stone. I knew it eventually I would do the hairdressing thing. So, yeah. Wow. And yeah, and then once I became a hairdresser, it was like everything changed. Do you, do you think, in what way? As in being around, again, more this, like... You found yourself, like, this is I, it? I was actually celebrated for being kind of more, more camp and out there. Mm. Again, the women. It was a predominant women. It was fence hair design, and you know the women just loved me. They loved me. They loved the dram and the outfits and stuff like that. They loved it. Where are you going, Sorry, Tell me everything. Um... Yeah, so it was kind of more celebrated for being this gay camp guy and stuff like that, as opposed to previous years, it was torture being that person. So mm. yeah, it was it was a 
an overwhelming sense of relief getting into that the hairdressing industry. Well, what would you say to like? Do you think that the uh, perception of the young gay person in a school mm. uh, is changed now? Is it easier for those people now? Do you think I would someone, like so, to think. Sorry, when you say those people, it's yeah, someone, yeah, yeah, no, no, I'm sorry, saying that category um, or may fall into that. Yeah, no, I, I would like to hope that it is easier for for the gay community in school now. Um, we are in a New Ireland. But at the same time, there's still an awful lot of, mm. of, of homophobia out there and stuff like that. Um, and I remember a couple of years ago, even after the, the referendum and the same sex marriages and everything, and uh, I sure. was leaving work in, in Blackpool and there was a, a, a man and a child coming towards me. The child was probably about seven and the man was in his 40s. And me just walking down the street, walked straight past me, effing faggot. For no reason. Never met the man in my life. His words didn't affect me. What so, affected so. me was, can you imagine for a second if, just if, hypothetically speaking, if his son is gay, can you imagine the impact that would have of that child, but also what he's teaching that child to be around mm. another person that might be gay? So, and that, you know, we are in a different Ireland. I would like to think mm. it's easier in the schools, but... Um, is that a setback for you personally to hear that? Or do you just... You deal it's with kind of, that? yeah, it's kind of like... It's an, it was an initial shock because, it, you know, it came out of nowhere. It was like three o'clock in the day, you know, on a sunny day. Um, but yeah, it, it was more, it, I, it didn't hit, hurt me as it would have previously. It was more, I thought instantly about that child. And if there was maybe someone out there might be watching this that mm. was going through that now, what would you say to them? Well, you know, speak up, tell somebody about it. And it's not acceptable behaviour. You need to talk to the teachers about it or you need to tell your parents, don't do what I did. I kept it all to myself. I was the one that was being uh, verbally abused every day, but I tried to protect my parents from it because I was worried what they would think. And did you have then a breaking point? Did you like, did it all come yeah, to I had a point a where point. Yeah, I had a breaking point. It was um, when I was about to sit one of my exams for my um, junior cert. <clears throat> it was science. And I remember two lads from an older year told me they were going to get me afterwards. And I remember going in, sitting the exam, and I just froze up. I, till I couldn't even read the questions that was on the page. I ended up writing what was on the test sheet onto my, my, my notepad. And that was the last day I went to school. I then told my parents what happened. And I was like, I can't do this anymore. And if you, if you send me there, I'll run away. You must have had, so if you were at your junior search, you've had three, four years of that. It was, yeah, it was, yeah, it was three years Every of day. relentless. Every day. Fair, constant fear of going to school. And it just got to the point where I was barely there anymore. Yeah, well, listen, thankfully you, uh, Gave yourself that time out yeah, to recover yeah, and yeah. like nourish yourself and mm -hmm. make yourself kind mm -hmm. of a bit, uh, and then you moved on to the hairdressing salon. Is it Fens? That you call Fens, it? yeah, is where I like, began. And just training. just to see you now, you're you're just uh, exuberant, happy, yeah, yeah, confident, yeah. yeah. Uh, um, and it seems you're really excited for the future. I know you've been through a lot in your business, yeah. but it seems that you're really only starting out. It just yeah, there's absolutely. so much opportunity yeah, for you. Absolutely, so much opportunity, and you know, we like I said, we just we opened up in McCartan Street. Um, April last year okay and I think there's a boom up in that street at the moment I think it's yeah. a kind of hit place it's going through a, a, a regeneration revival. There's a revival revival, yeah. going on up there and um, yeah it's very promising and it's exciting yeah, and stuff. yeah. well listen uh, thank you so much for your time thank today. you for having me we have delighted having you on here uh, really really interesting we sincerely wish you all the best thank and I'm so sure we'll be hearing a lot more from you so thank you so much David material boy thank you thank you Cheers. <laughs> thanks very much